Hey, my name is Regina Davis, and I wanted to go over with you my personal journey with anxiety. I'd always had issues with it. I just didn't know what it was. Um, I'd have anxiety attacks, panic attacks. Didn't really know why or what was going on. In my family, we were kind of taught to keep it all down to yourself. Don't show weakness. Don't let anybody know that anything affects you or bothers you or whatever. You're supposed to be a normal person. We didn't talk about anxiety, depression, panic disorders, anything emotional. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I just kind of dealt with everything for the longest time. And then I was at the grocery store one day and trying to back out of the parking spot. Kind of got turned sideways a little bit, you know, kind of doing that little back out thing. And <clears throat> this truck pulled out in front of me and just kind of boxed me in. And it was the whole fight or flight situation kicking in with me. And I got to the point to where I really couldn't handle. So on my way home, I passed by this church and there was a woman I work with. I knew she was there. But I didn't want to stop because I wasn't in church clothes. So I kind of sucked it up, came home crying, talked to my mom who's watching my kids, and I told her I just about T boned a vehicle because I just couldn't handle the anxiety and the panic attack. I had to get out and I had to get somewhere safe. Um, I realized that I had a problem. But the hardest part was realizing and admitting to somebody, especially my mom, that, you know, I had the problem. <clears throat> so um, we sat there and we talked about it for a little bit. And she told me that she has anxiety and depression and that my aunt also had it and was on medications for it. So. It kind of dawned on me, you know, I'm not the only one going through this situation. They were doing it too, but they had hit it longer than me and a whole lot better than I did. So I made an appointment with my doctor. She put me on appeal and for a little bit it helped. And then I started realizing it wasn't doing as good as it should have been doing. You know, I was still having the anxiety attacks. They were still getting pretty bad. And I talked to her about it, and she put me on another one. Well, it worked for a time, and I would take it, and my heart would race so bad. And I would have anxiety really bad, which would throw me into a panic attack because my heart was beating so fast I couldn't breathe. And I just wanted to kind of call somebody and be like, hey, can you track my phone and find out where I'm at because I'm here and I'm having this problem. And I feel like I'm going to have a heart attack in my car in a parking lot in a big city away from home. <clears throat> so I talked to my doctor, told her what was going on. She's like, well, let's put you on this medicine. It's doing good for everybody else. So I took this medication and <clears throat> it led to me having to have a heart pill because I had ended up in the ER technocardic my heart would go everywhere. It would go down from 47 beats per minute up to 197 beats per minute. And <clears throat> that was just resting, laying on a bed. They're like, well, this is not normal. And I said, well, I don't feel normal. They're like, well, we're going to have to put you on a heart pill. And then with the heart pills, my hands would swell and my feet would swell, my face would swell. And then they're like, well, let's put you on water pills. I'm like, this is no life for me. I'm not the kind of person to take pills. I don't like pills. So I started doing research because I knew there had to be another way. There's people out here that have it and they've dealt with it and they're doing something, you know, whether it's home remedies or whatever. So I started doing some research and everything and I looked into meditation, hypnosis, everything I could do by myself at home, hiding in privacy with. Facebook and YouTube, which became good friends. Um, 
you Google everything, you learn about it, you try it, and you find out, you know, what works, what don't work. And then one day I came across an ad, I think it was on Google, maybe Safari, and they were talking about CBD oil. I'm like, well, you know, I don't know. I don't know if that's what I want or not. And then I had my girls at gymnastics practice and we went to eat and I saw a little flyer there for CBD oil. Well, apparently this is big because somebody's looked into it and they've left their little pamphlet laying here. So I kind of memorized the information, went home, checked it out. There's thousands of products out there, thousands of CBD suppliers or whatever. And I kept looking and kept looking and a friend of mine on Facebook is like, well, have you tried this brand? I told her, I said, no, I don't know anything about it. And she talked to me about it. And she's like, well, I use it. And I have the same problems you're having right now. So I said, well, you know, from what you've told me, it doesn't hurt to give it a try. <clears throat> and I talked to my brother about it. And he's like, well, you know, there's some good things and there's some bad things. And I decided, well, it's got a 30 day money back guarantee. So if it doesn't do anything and I don't like it, you know, I'll get my money back minus shipping and handling. So I had to wait, I think it was like 10 days for the order to come in and I started taking it. Well, I noticed big improvement in my anxiety. Wasn't having the panic attacks and you know, my heart was feeling a little better. And I started taking it September 19th, 2018. In like a week, you know, I started feeling really good. You know, I didn't feel the panic and the anxiety and everything. Fast forward a little bit, a few months. <clears throat> it was Thanksgiving. I was off work. We were on Thanksgiving break, me and the kids. And I had realized I had to take my medicine all week. No heart heal, no anxiety medicine, no stomach medicine nothing. I had been so caught up and so busy, I forgot to take my medicine for a whole week. I felt good. I didn't need the medicine. So I made a tough choice. I stopped taking everything and I started feeling a whole hundred percent better. Back to myself, back to the normal, fun, happy-go-lucky me and <clears throat> no anxiety, no panic. So I go to my heart doctor and she's like, well, your heart looks really good. What have you been doing? You know, are you relaxing, taking it easy? I don't see all this stuff on the monitor anymore. And I'm like, I stopped my medicine. She's like, well, what are you doing? So I said, well, I'm taking CBD oil and I like it and I'm not going to quit. And I was all defensive, ready to be prepared to defend my choice. And my surprise, she's like, well, I'm happy for you. Good for you that you found something that you're comfortable with that has helped you. And I'm like, so you're not mad? She's like, no, you know, it's helping. So go ahead and keep doing what you're doing. I left the doctor's office that day and I was completely amazed. I mean, I felt good. My doctor says, keep doing what you're doing. So fast forward two years. I'm still doing what I'm doing. I take my CBD oil and don't take my medicine. I haven't took it since November, 2018. And I feel wonderful. No heart issues, no anxieties, which I have small anxiety attacks and things like that, but nothing that can't be dealt with by taking a little bit of extra oil. <clears throat> and the kicker for me, I don't like driving on four lanes highways, interstates, back roads to wherever, because I don't like doing it. And <clears throat> with the oil, I've drove to Indianapolis when my husband slept in the passenger seat. I've done the whole little four-way clover interstate thingy thing where you got to get off and get on and get off and get on and end up getting lost. Well, I've done all that by myself. And I've drove to Tennessee by myself and Ohio, a few other places, Virginia and stuff like that. So feeling pretty good about my choice. 
I mean, I've researched it, I've tried it, I liked it, and it helped. Best thing ever, I'm off the medicine. I control my anxiety. It does not control me. And, you know, there's some really, really bad days where I do it. Like this week, you know, I've been doing some things and working on some programs and stuff and thinking more about anxiety-related issues, doing some research so I can help everybody and put together these videos and things. Well, I was dwelling on anxiety, therefore my anxiety built up. Where before, I knew I didn't have to worry about it. I did not think about anxiety. That was not my main focus. I didn't have to deal with it. If I had a small anxiety attack or start feeling something come on, I'd take my oil and be gone with it because I knew, you know, with my oil, it was gone. But I will admit I've had a couple of bad days this week that I've took my oil and I'm like, it's going to go away. It will go away. But <clears throat> like Bob Proctor says, you know, you think it, you believe it, it happens. So I was thinking anxiety. I believe in anxiety because I've had it and it happened. So now I'm going to rework my brain here and tell it, you know what? No anxiety. It's gone. I'm in control and I don't have to worry and deal with it anymore. I mean, to know me, to think about me ever being on video, talking to people and stuff like that, that would have never happened. Um, I work in pre-K. I talk to little kids, three and four year olds. That's my people. I have five kids. You know, that's my people. Um, to talk to adults and open up and let them inside my personal bubble is not a thing that I do. But I decided that I should share this because there's somebody out there who needs to hear my story because they're, they think they're going through something like this by themselves when they're not, you know, um, if I can help one person by telling my story, then it's worth the embarrassment, you know, go ahead and make fun pick, whatever. I never dress coordinatedly. My pants never match my shirt. My shoes never match my purse. Whatever people are obsessed with. I'm just me. I dress in whatever's comfortable to get down and play with the kids or just be myself. Sometimes I wear makeup. Sometimes I don't. I don't care. I'm not going to be a false person to impress somebody else. But using this system and listening to the videos that you're going to watch, especially the bonus videos. And in the ebook that I put together for you, the starred ones I always use. That I hope watching this that I've reached out to somebody. And maybe it may not be you. Maybe it's somebody in your family or something that needs to know that they're not alone. You know, I've put my contact information in there. And if somebody always needs to just have that person to just sit and listen to, so that they know that they're not crazy. I can be that person, you know. I don't care to let them know they're not alone in this journey. So if I've helped anybody, I am truly grateful. That's the reason why I put this together. And I hope that I have helped somebody. So you've heard my journey. Now, I have a challenge. I want you to start your personal journey. You may get inspired by whatever throughout this video and throughout the books and things like that. <clears throat> Document everything you're doing. Write down how you feel. Be grateful. Do a gratitude journal. It really works. But um, make a video or an audio or just write it out and tell somebody your, your whole journey, your story. And maybe you can inspire somebody. And I hope that everybody takes advantage of the Facebook group, Simple Anxiety Relief. I think it will really help and benefit somebody because there's probably that one person out there that needs to hear our stories or your story, my story. Maybe somebody needs to hear their story. But let's just remember that we're not alone and we're all in this together.
and I cannot wait to hear about your journey and how you're going to stop your anxiety. So thanks for listening to me and taking this time out of your life to hear my story and my battle with anxiety. Thank you.